Itty Bitty Homestead and today we're going to be making barbecue sauce and then I'm going to be canning it. And I don't remember whose recipe this is, but it is a copycat uh, Baby Ray barbecue sauce and I just do my own thing. Uh, I may have a video up for this already, uh, but I do my own thing and I add honey to it. And I know Baby Ray makes a honey barbecue sauce, but um, I'm just making my own. Okay? Alright, so um, let me get the camera turned around and um, we'll get started. Alright, now... Okay, brown sugar down. Now I can make some fresh. So let's stir this in. Okay. One and a half cup of molasses. Um, let's see, times three is uh, four and a half cups. Okay, so my measure here is four cups. This is, sorry, this is heavy, so I'm going to have to do it the way I'm more comfortable. Uh, four cups. I'm not going to have enough molasses to make my brown sugar, so um, I'll have to go buy another jug. So, no brown sugar today, but that's okay. Okay, that's about right. Sorry, I'm, I know I'm probably blocking your view. Um, okay, there we go. Turn that up. All right, so there's our molasses. Then I'm going to need three cups of apple cider vinegar. Okay, just use my molasses. I'm sorry, I'm gonna measure this off to the side. Tell you this is already starting to smell amazing. All right, now three fourths of a cup of water. Uh, oh my God, my brain. Three fourths, three times. One. Three tablespoon Worcestershire sauce. Three tablespoons. You know, I could have just measured this all out sooner, but that's okay. One. Two. So this gives it the salt. Three. Okay. And four tablespoons. Right. Four tablespoons of ground mustard. Ground. Whoops. Okay. Well, not part of the part that I'm now wearing on my shirt. But let's see. What did I say? Four tablespoons. Oh, it's twelve. Okay, 
Um, let me get a different measuring device. And I will bring you back when I have 12 tablespoons in here. Okay, and this makes 12. I have to pull out the big boy. <laughs> okay, so 12 tablespoons of mustard. Okay, and now I need a smoked paprika. Hold on a sec, my container's empty. Okay, now I am participating in the um, January pantry challenge through Sutton's Days and a couple other gals that are, are uh, involved that I think. And I am happy to say that I am making this barbecue sauce from everything out of my pantry. I did not go to the store and buy anything. And it just so happens, that's what I was, well, you don't know how long I was gone. I was gone for a little bit because I went into my pantry searching around for smoked paprika. And by golly, I have two jars. So I have it. All right. So just want to say, I'm still doing the challenge, which I'm nine tablespoons. All right. I'll bring you back when I got all the nine in. Okay, I didn't put in quite nine um, because I realized that I am going to be putting in some uh, ancho uh, chili pepper um, and I'm going to be putting in some mild Marconi peppers and these are peppers that I, I grew myself and um, dehydrated and they're just a milder pepper. Um, I don't like super hot so um, I, I did back off a little bit so I'm going to... Instead, I'm going to finish, I just need three more tablespoons. So, do two of these. One, two. I'm going to have to grow more of these. I still have two, I still have two peppers on my plant that I haven't plucked yet. But two peppers is not enough to dehydrate. It won't really make anything. Okay, and this is, um, oh, let me show you my chili pepper ancho. And it's got the same smell as um, paprika, the smoked paprika. So I'm just going to do one tablespoon of that. Okay, so all of those are done. Now, let's see. Uh, Two teaspoons of granulated garlic. So that's uh, six teaspoons. One of these days, I'm going to be able to do this just by putting it in the palm of my hand, like Christine does. Two. Six, but I'm going to use some of my my home ground garlic powder uh, just because I want to make more. And I love garlic, so I'm going to use a little bit extra. Oh, it smells amazing. All right, so garlic is in. Now I want. All right, now it says. Two teaspoons of chili powder or cayenne. No way I'm using cayenne because that's just not me. Um, what did it say? Two, one, two, four, six teaspoons. Yeah, I don't think so. But let's see. Teaspoons. Uh, hey Google, how many teaspoons in a tablespoon? One U.S. tablespoon equals three U.S. teaspoons. Okay, so uh, two tablespoons, but they're going to be very light tablespoons. Okay, there we go. Alrighty, so 
Now let's put in two tablespoons of uh, canning salt, which would be six, uh, but I'm definitely not going to put that many in because um, I'm watching my um, sodium intake, but I am using canning salt. One, two, and I realize that salt does make some things taste better. Three, four, so I'm going to put in five, okay? Just holding back one tablespoon, that's all. Shouldn't affect uh, anything. Okay, now let's see, so three tablespoons of black pepper. Isn't this cute? A little mason jar. Isn't this is too cute. Okay, that's another one for a little scan. Okay, three. Okay. It's actually a shaker. <laughs> I only use it for pepper, but <laughs> I do have one for the salt, but I don't use it. Okay, and then we are going to use. Okay, it doesn't call for onion, anything, but. I am going to um, insert about, oh, I don't know, say three or four tablespoons of onion powder, because really what is barbecue sauce without onion powder, right? So that was three very generous tablespoons, and I will taste this la later and see if it needs anything else. And then... Last, but most definitely not least, my add to all of this, honey. So, one, two, Big blob of crystallized. Three. I'm have to wash this jar. <laughs> Four, it's probably five. Let's do one more. One. Six. Okay. That might be enough, honey. We'll see. Now, let's get this all stirred up, and I am going to get a whisk, okay, starting to get warm, so all that crystallized honey and molasses will all melt and then hopefully this all those powders I put in will start to meld all right I will bring you back when this is uh, simmering okay thought I'd bring you back as I get my canner ready um, my jars are washed with hot soapy water rinsed them and I do have them in the oven um, they've been in there I don't even know how long but um, I just added some more, so I just turned it back on. Um, this is just some regular um, Vaseline that I just put around very lightly. You can barely see it on my fingers. And I just keep spreading it. Uh, and what this does is it helps uh, to get the lid on and off. 
my my I have a Presto canner, and my canner is probably uh, two years old, three years old, maybe three years. Um, not that old, really. But it's it's well loved. So then you take your lid and always make sure that you do your required checking. You make sure that this hole that you can see through it. If not, take a pipe cleaner and run it through there. Uh, you make sure that your uh, emergency blowhole is not super dry and yucky and it moves so that it can pop up. And then you make sure that this, uh, the pressure gauge here, the uh, pop-up pressure indicator here. Uh, now I like to put a little bit of Vaseline on mine just so that it pops up and down easily. I've had it get stuck before and there's nothing wrong but that. Okay, then now I typically do this after a canning session before I store it away, but looking at this, uh, I didn't do it. So, and I don't do it every time either. So, um, I'm going to do it now just because I have time to kill. This is just starting to come to a rolling boil. Um, and then I'm going to simmer it, give it a nice stir. But you see, I'm not using much. Um, you guys see what I'm doing? Yeah. I'm not using much in the way of Vaseline, of course, because you don't want to gum it all up either. And then just under where this metal is, I like to run a little bit that's just left over on my fingers. Okay, so my water reboiled. So that's ready to go. Okay, canner is ready to go. barbecue sauce is done. Now if I wanted it thicker, um, as you can see it did reduce a bit, but if I wanted it thicker I would just leave the lid off and let it continue to simmer. But I can always thicken it when I'm getting ready to use it by adding a little bit of um, cornstarch or I think xanthan gum maybe. I'm not sure. But anyway, so I've got everything set up. My jars are piping, piping hot. Got my vinegar to wipe my rims. Got my, I'm going to primarily use um, Tatler lids. I like them. I, I haven't had any problems with them, but I want to go ahead and I've never done a really big canning session with them. So I'm going to give that a try. Got my rings ready. Everything's ready to go. So let me just bring you into a comfortable spot where you'll be able to see, hopefully, and where I won't uh, melt my camera or canner, I mean my, my tripod. Let's see, is that gonna work? I had you set up perfect until I picked up. Maybe that will work. Let me go close that light behind me, the blinds. But as much as I like to use natural power, the sun to heat my kitchen, um, it's not working out so well with videoing. Okay, so actually move this over here. Alrighty. Everything's hot. So rule of thumb, hot, uh, hot food, hot jars, hot canner. Okay, so hot, hot, hot. Everything has to be hot. Don't have to make your lids hot if you don't want. Tatler, I do believe you do need to to make the rubber softer um, so that it'll conform better. But um, according to Ball, you don't need to heat their lids anymore, but I do anyway. So I, I add boiling water that's been sitting there for a while. So according to my directions, I'm going to fill these jars. These are 12 ounce jars. I'm going to fill them to three fourths um, headspace. Oh, excuse me. Now, where is my. I don't need to debubble, but if you don't have one of these, 
See, see it? Get one. <laughs> I'm just saying because you want a full pool foolproof way to measure uh, your uh, headspace. So if I stick this on the side of the rim on this first notch, that is a quarter inch of headspace. So pretty much lines up with this first ring on the twist part of the bar, uh, jar. Um, if I need a one inch headspace, then I put it on the very last notch. And you know, you don't angle it or anything, you just go straight down. And that would show me my one inch mark is just below this bottom ring on this jar. So just saying, okay. Alright, so that's where I would stop for one inch. And there's three quarters. Okay. Put that over. Now, even though I used a funnel, you always want to wipe the rims. You can see. Uh, no guarantee that it won't get dirty. I like to wipe down the sides as well. Yowzer Kapowzers, that's hot. And grab my tongs. Now, Tatler lids are a little different. You don't put them on finger tight. Okay. You put it on tight like that. Well, I guess finger tight. Yeah. And then you... Sorry about my dogs. Anyway, okay, because they're distracting me. So, finger tight, and then back off a little tiny bit, okay? That's how tacklers work. All right. I'm sorry. We're just going to have to endure them for a minute. They'll be done. So, isn't that pretty? Okay, so that's going to go into the jar. Okay, so now let's do another one. I'll do one more and then I will bring you back when I'm all done with these and we'll see how many I got into my canner. I do have one jar left from last summer, uh, last August, I guess I made barbecue sauce. Um, I have one jar left. So um, I'm going to use that, I think, uh, tonight to make uh, uh, chicken wings. I'm craving chicken wings. All right, so do this one more time just so you can see. Okay, after this I'll go rob a bank because I won't have any fingerprints left. <laughs> I'm kidding, but see what I mean by wiping? And I'm careful, as I try to be. Okay, grab a tattler, put that on, ring, okay, finger tight. It's just too hot. And then back off, just like barely a quarter of a turn. And I know, I know, I knew the reason why I had to do this with Tatler lids, but I can honestly tell you I have forgotten. So uh, maybe during intermission, I will uh, look it up again and maybe give you some information if I can remember to even do that. All right, I will bring you back when these are all filled and we'll see how many we got. And so these are then going to process in the pressure canner uh, pints. But because these aren't pints, they're still going to process for pints. Same with these little guys. Um, 
but they uh, will process for 20 minutes. If I was doing quartz, it would be 25 minutes, but um, I'm just doing these 12 ounce, which is like three quarters of a pint. Okay, be back soon. Okay, last two. Used all but probably two teaspoons and whatever is on here and whatever's on my rags. <laughs> Ran out of tattler lids, so the last couple of half pint jars, um, just been regular rings. Okay, hold on one second, I mean regular lids. All right, so 10. All right, so out of a, out of a um, triple batch, Recipe, I got um, 16 12 ounce jars or three quarters of a pint, and I got four half pints. That's a lot of barbecue sauce. So, um, yeah. All right. So now let me uh, plug you here so I can just bring you over. And let me get you turned around. Okay. So. There's my jar, right there. Well, okay, you can see it. Um, there's an arrow over here on this handle. So you can line up, what you're gonna wanna do is uh, line up the arrows. So arrow to arrow, and then make sure it's seated all the way, and then turn it. Now it's locked, because we are gonna wait for a steady stream of heavy steam to be coming out of this spout. Uh, I call it the blowhole. We'll then time it for 10 minutes with the steam coming out. Uh, and that's why I always add a little extra water um, just to allow for all the water vapors that's gonna be coming out. And then we will put our weight on and wait for it to come up to pressure. But I'll bring you back when this is at full steam. Okay, so. That is a heavy steam. You see it? And it will get a little heavier, but um, I've started my timer, mostly because this has already started to pop up. Yeah, okay, note to everybody, don't touch it. <laughs> this water's hot. So, there you go, it's a steaming. All right, so, uh, 10 minutes, then I'm gonna put my weight on here. For my altitude, I'm gonna let this come up to 11 pounds of pressure. This should be jiggling by then. And then I'm gonna let it process for 20 minutes. Then when it's all finished, I'm gonna turn the heat off, let it sit until this reaches zero and this falls back down. Then I'm gonna let it sit for an additional 10 minutes. Then I'll remove the lid and take the jars out, okay? But I'll bring you back to that part. I just wanted to bring you back really quick to say, I'm glad that I added that little tiny splash of vinegar that I put in at the beginning. I just did that out of habit because I forgot to pour the rest of the vinegar into the camera. See these red hairs? That's my excuse. Okay, Google, cancel timer. All right, so as you can see, very heavy. All right, it's been 10 minutes. So now we will put, ah, sentence. Put that on and this will go up quite fast. Okay, so all done. It does smell like uh, barbecue sauce in the can or so. Hoping I didn't lose too much. We'll see. So um, with tattler lids, what you have to do is when you take them out of the canner, you got to tighten the lid. Okay. So all right. Plug you. There you go. And here is the best part. 
I actually had no siphoning. Not even a little. I mean, I had just a, like a few drops on the top layer and that was it. Try to go slow so I don't make you sick. But, oh, isn't that beautiful? All right, so all my Tatler lids are tightened. Um, first pop from the normal, oops, second pop. But, let's see if you can see this. Isn't that beautiful? And these guys are smoking hot. We're talking like, ouch, ouch, ouch. Woo! Love it. Music to my ears. All right. I'm going to get a fast picture. And then I will edit this video and get it up. So if you like videos like this, and you'd like to see more, please give me a thumbs up. And um, if you want to be notified when I upload new videos, the, please subscribe by pressing the subscribe. All right. Thank you. Stay safe and go Pantry Challenge January 2019. All right.